didn't she do a fantastic job? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to have you back up here. Yes. And uh, we won't do it today, I'll be kind. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have to have you back up here. And there's so much wisdom. Yes. You know, they say that wisdom, all it means is that you survive the experiences. <laughs> and they actually call that wisdom. Uh, there's something good about maturing. There's something good about, um, I am reminded of that great philosopher, Richard Pryor. That was a great philosopher. You know, he was. You really should listen to Richard. He hid a lot of stuff in humor. He did. He made his money, but he told a lot of stuff. You didn't know that he was one of the uh, supporters of the Black Panther Party? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Richard said was, he said that, um, have you ever met an old fool? <laughs> he said, Fools don't live to get old. <laughs> Certain amount of truth in that. I stand before you because I have an X and a Y chromosome. I stand before you because I am Sister Lois' son. I stand before you because Mama Sanders took some time out. A lot of time that would be, but that's. I stand before you because my mother gave me more of an education than I thought I would get. Now, I grew up in a different type of a family, and God willing, things have changed. Very chauvinistic family. Men did not clean up. Outside the house, maybe. Snow, you yeah, had to do the snow. Uh, men did not cook, men did it on and on and on. All of the, 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 there was a place for men and a place for women. Yeah. And there was a big gap in between. <laughs> a big gap in between. Uh, but I saw some stuff. Now my mother came from Alabama. They don't make it that way no more. <laughs> they don't. My mother had me. I was born not in a hospital. I was born at home. I was born in the Hamill's house. No midwife. No medicine, no nothing. Just my mother and I. And that must have been an easy delivery. Because I'm a bad kid. <laughs> my daughter hates that term. She, oh, there's no bad kid. I was a bad kid. When you, well, I had a pretty good guidance. When I threw that chair at that teacher, my guidance was good. <laughs> Very good guidance. I learned to let to that teacher. <laughs> so, but my mother, you know, I, I had, let me see anybody in here under 18. That was true, come out there. That was true. How much truth should I tell up here? I'm going to get out of here in a second, but I just want to know how much truth should I tell you. Wait a minute, that ain't the same thing. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> I have been, I was a bad kid, sir. I have been suspended more than seven times and should have been suspended another seven. <laughs> should have been suspended. I, and that, that years ago, they didn't have those one day suspensions. You were out for a week or two, depending on what you did. And I did it all. So I was a bad kid, but the reason why I got through school, I'm going to do this one quick because I usually end up crying when I think about it, because my mother came in there pleading with them. I humiliated my mother. Humiliated. She had to constantly go in and plead to folk who didn't look like her and didn't think like her to keep Junior in school. I didn't understand it, wouldn't have, wouldn't have entered those things. So I humiliated her on a, seemingly on a daily basis. Uh, trouble kid, trouble, yeah, I was all of that good stuff. So I'm here to tell you, uh, women, that um, part of my fire is because I have a lot of karma to, to give back. I got a lot to make up. 
And I got a lot of karma to make up in terms of women. In terms of women. Having understood, I also have two sisters. And they, um, they helped liberate me. In other words, they didn't put up with the mess. <laughs> they helped liberate me from a, a backward way of thinking. And I also, like our sister in the back, also had to figure out that when I understood that men could not be free until women are free. Amen. It's just going to be no more freedom. And we're all free or we will not be free. That's just the bottom line. And when you really wrestle with that and understand that, then you're going to have to deal with, you're going to have to challenge yourself to all of the backwards concepts that you grew up with. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to wrestle. You know what? You're going to wrestle for the rest of your life. Just as sexism is such that it's like racism to a degree. If you're born in a swamp, Ms. Martinez, don't tell me that you don't have mud on <laughs> When I meet my, my beautiful white folk and they tell me they have no racism, I, I'm worried. I'm saying to myself, you are, you're not struggling. You cannot, you cannot be born in a swamp and not have mud on Men, too, have to spend their lives struggling against backwards concepts. Backwards concepts. Wear the right role of women and all that good stuff. Now, I, I, I love being a man. God made me a man, and I love being a man. But being a man does not mean that I got to step on a woman. There's something unmanly about a man who steps on a woman. See, I, I grew up, I'm not going to tell you my whole history. I grew up where not only the belt was his bed. But there was going to be no sassin of, of women to men in my household, in, in that household. And that was wrong. A lot of wrong stuff. Having said that, I have a real commitment to making sure that we get out of the hole. And I understand that women hold up half the sky. Yes. And I also understand that the sky has stolen in us. On us is because women held up a little bit more than half. <laughs> a little bit more than half. This is not the best age for men. But I want you all not to despair. This is not the best age. Men have been better than this. This is a weak age for men. My mother taught me that as time goes on, you're going to find people, the young people, are getting wiser and weaker. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Wiser and weaker. On one hand, they know all kinds of stuff that we didn't know, and yet having a harder and harder time standing up for themselves. Standing up. All right. So I'm going to do a bunch of stuff in the days to come. In fact, we are, we are about to undergo a, my cousin Bernie Sanders. Don't laugh. Why? He was like he was my cousin. I'm also, yeah, why not? You never know where they brought us. I also want to speak to him about back pain. We should do it first in the Sanders plan. Let's share this. Let's prove this, Bernie. Come on now. But Bernie is speaking about a political revolution. I like that. I like that word. Those, those, they, they don't scare me. You all need to listen to that. Or maybe to let it dwell, sink in for a minute. We, my, my team doesn't even know it yet, but this is the year that we are undergoing political revolution. We're going to do some amazing things. We are going into economic development. We are not going to be, we have enough city council people now, let them fix the uh, potholes and all kinds of stuff. Somebody had to do the planning for our community. Somebody had to do the higher level planning. We need to own some of these stores around here. own your homes. Yeah. Somebody has to take on the banks and all the rest of that stuff to open up some of that capital so that y'all can do. And you know what? I need your women to lead this. I do. I need your women to lead this. Who 
who else can lead it better? I wish it weren't true. But it is true. And since it's true, I'm man enough to say it. We need to start working on owning businesses. Hallelujah. It's called a transition, right? Oh. <laughs> all kinds of ideas in their head, right? Yeah, right. Then you are going to introduce one of the most dynamic women business owners out there. But, but don't tell them. Be our secret. We need to own our homes. They can't gentrify you if you own your home. They cannot gentrify you if you own your home. If you don't own your home, you are at the mercy. You better hope that your landlord. Well, but if you own it, they can't put you out. If you own those stores in your community, you wouldn't have to shove your money through a little peephole. <laughs> Putting your money through a peephole to get shoddy old goods back at you, thrown back at you, and if you do go into the store, you discover you got a shadow. You say to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, shadows are not inside, oh yes you do. You go this way, they go this way. You go that way, they go that way. You lift your hand, they lift their eyes. Then we go think. We are going into business ownership. We are going into those things. I'm about to take my team away, and, and, and uh, my deputy chief was up there talking about that she wanted to go away from the weekend. She wanted to go. You get in your wish. Well, I actually found a place out of New York City that we're going to. Don't let them fool you. That's when, they, that's when they really love it. Look at this thing. <laughs> We're going to do some training to get ready because you can't do this type of stuff without knowing what you're doing. And one of the ways of doing that is by bringing before you some of the most dynamic folk who broke in the rules. The rules say that women will always be the mules of the world. Journey of earth. Women will always be the mules of the world. Break the rules. Do not accept this. Don't accept this madness. Any game that is fixed and says you got to lose, don't play. Go with a new deal. So we need to have models. It's good to talk about it, but somebody got to be about it. We got to find different models. We got to find some folk who have done different, who have not accepted the rules that say we will always be the use of wood and the drawers of water forever. So with that in mind, I'm glad to bring my dynamic sister warriors, all of you, together. I'm glad that we're going to feed you right and all the rest. <laughs> and we're going to make sure that the men are working and my sisters are sitting down learning. This is, this is your we gonna let's get you Let's get you. Let's get you. It is an honor. No, I said sitting down work to learn. You said you said you learning today. Let's get used to this. If women were doing it, nobody would it wouldn't blink. It wouldn't blink. It would seem natural. It should be as natural if we are serving too. That's why. In a few, you're going to see me wash my hand. If they let me, I'm going to go back and serve. You're going to let me serve? Okay. I'm going to wash my hand. I'm going to wash your hand. you going to wash your shirt. Bibbo, we never use him again. So having said those things, I've said too much. I'm glad to be with you. I'm glad that we will break bread together. I'm glad that we have brought so many dynamic women and those women have brought men, men strong enough to learn a new way. Not every man is. But I'll tell you a little secret. 
Men can learn from women. Amen. Men are very flexible. They are very pragmatic. If they see whistling doesn't work, they will stop whistling. If they see calling you out your name doesn't work, they will start calling you by your name. Yes. Men are, and especially young men, are very flexible. They're looking to see what works. They can argue over what, what, what they're trying to work, but I'm not talking about what works. So if we are to change this, in part, we have to change ourselves. You're right. You're right. Higher standard for yourself and insisting you're going to hold, you're going to have this thing. Having said that, don't you think it's time for you to take this money? <laughs> I look forward to breaking bread with you and, and, and serving you all and, and, and doing many things in the days to come. We are going to do some amazing <coughs> things together in the near future where we create the model that the rest of this nation needs, a model of a sufficient community that does for self, where we start owning what is ours and controlling a community instead of bemoaning why they ain't helping us. Oh, wow.